Hello and welcome to Global Health TV. We're here at Save the Children and I'm joined by their Director of Development Policy, Patrick Watts. Thanks for joining us, Patrick. Thank you. Now you've just launched the No Child Born to Die campaign. Tell us a little bit about that campaign and what you're trying to achieve with it. Well, the campaign is about drawing attention um, to the fact that there are 8 million children dying each year from preventable causes in the world's poorest countries and that something can be done about this. And we have identified in particular three key gaps that we think need to be bridged if we're going to see a breakthrough on child health in the next uh, five years. That will enable us to achieve this Millennium Development Goal of a two-thirds reduction in child mortality by 2015. And those are gaps around immunisation, around health workers and around financing. We think if those gaps are bridged, we can see really decisive progress in the coming years. But the world has made progress on child mortality, hasn't it? Things are moving in the right direction. That's right, and we very much want to draw attention to that. I think it's important to recognise that it isn't just a bad news story. There's been some very significant progress, including in some of the poorest countries, countries like Malawi, uh, Nepal, Bangladesh, where we've seen real uh, gains made in terms of child health and well-being. And the real challenge now is to identify the lessons from those countries and apply those more widely. Now things may be improving, but give us an idea of how stark the situation is still. Well, it's improving, but it's not improving fast enough. So at the moment, we would need to see a fourfold increase in the uh, rate of reduction in child mortality if we're going to achieve this uh, United Nations Millennium Development Goal, this uh, objective of two-thirds reduction in, in child deaths by 2015. And particularly in Africa, there's a huge uh, unfinished agenda to be met. We've moved from a situation where in 1990, one third of children who were dying before their fifth birthday were African to a situation today where that figure is one half. Now is the frustration in this in part down to the fact that unlike other global health issues, you know how to solve this one. The death of millions of children is needless. Absolutely. The, the, the real challenge is not a technological one. We say in our report that we don't primarily need a technological breakthrough, we need a political breakthrough. That we already have very uh, good evidence of what works in terms of uh, preventing uh, uh, child deaths. We know that immunisations can make a dramatic difference. We know that uh, bed nets can have a dramatic effect in preventing cases of malaria. We know that clean water, sanitation uh, are crucial in terms of addressing uh, diarrhoea and pneumonia. So there's a, a whole range of interventions out there that taken in combination can have a really dramatic effect on children's chances of reaching their fifth birthday. But with the global economy in tatters, this just isn't going to be high up the agenda for the world's leaders. It's uh, it's a hard sell to uh, get uh, rich countries to be outward looking at this at this point. But we think we've got a very compelling uh, investment case actually to uh, sell to donor countries. That if they tackle uh, the problem of child health uh, now and tackle it with cost effective preventive measures, it will save money in the long term, it will reap major development benefits for countries uh, over, over many generations. Now you're trying to mobilise the world's senior politicians through a grassroots campaign. Why are you taking that approach and what are you expecting people to do? Well we want the public to get on board with this campaign, not just in countries like the United Kingdom, um, but also in countries, uh, developing countries where a very large part of this challenge exists. And we think that we're going to see much more progress, much faster progress on these challenges if uh, governments recognise that there's a real constituency out there demanding change. So we're wanting people to make their voices heard through a whole variety of different uh, channels, through uh, digital media, uh, through uh, more traditional campaigning methods. We want people to support us with their money as well. And we think in a whole different set of ways we can build public support and create a, an irresistible momentum for change. Well, Patrick, that's all we've got time for. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.